The interior of a small schoolroom with a few desks and the blackboard hanging on the wall in the material below. The situations are happening to several girls. But the most interesting is the one on the right side of the frame. Age approximately 25 years old, dressed in a black jacket, navy blue shirt and black trousers. Black. Patent high heels on bare feet. The position of the right foot out of the shoe dominates here, although again not completely. The right leg is usually lowered to the floor. Biological vessels for liquid nitrogen. What are their characteristics and how to choose the right one? The popularity of liquid nitrogen is constantly growing. And the properties of this compound turn out to be very valuable, e.g. in science, medicine and veterinary medicine. Thanks to this substance, biological resources such as cells, tissues and gametes can be quickly frozen and then easily stored. However, for this to be possible, biological vessels for liquid nitrogen are needed. By reading this article, you will learn among other things, what are the characteristics of these containers and how to choose the right one. Liquid nitrogen vessels, also known as dewars, are specialized containers intended for the transport and storage of this substance that is demanding on conditions. It is worth noting that this compound requires extremely low temperatures. The dewars available on the market, although they work on a similar principle, differ slightly from each other. The basic division includes transport dewar vessels, intended for the transport and storage of liquid nitrogen, biological dewar vessels, used in the transport and storage of biological materials. Biological vessels for liquid nitrogen differ from transport dewars primarily in that they are equipped with special containers, called canisters. It is in them that the frozen material is placed. They allow easy access to biological resources and provide them with appropriate conditions. When choosing a biological liquid nitrogen vessel, it is crucial to match the container to your own needs. As we have already mentioned, dewars differ in, for example, capacity, this is a factor that affects their mobility, as well as how long liquid nitrogen stays in the container. Individual vessels can also have a different number of canisters, the more canisters there are, the more samples can be stored in a given dewar. Importantly, in the case of biological vessels intended for use in science, medicine or veterinary medicine. There is no room for compromise, the containers must be solid and have the required approvals. Therefore, it is best to use the services of an experienced supplier who has good opinions among other specialists. Too much salt can interfere with the immune system. Eating too much salt, which is common in many Western societies, is not only bad for your cardiovascular system, but can also adversely affect your immune system, according to a recent study. Western societies tend to overuse salt. We know that salt can have a detrimental effect on our cardiovascular system and our blood pressure and the list of reasons why we should avoid it has recently been extended again. And it's a key factor for the functioning of our body. Scientists have determined that salt can affect the so-called regulatory T lymphocytes, TREG, impairing their metabolism. Research conducted by scientists has proven that salt can negatively affect the system that is crucial for our functioning. This is about the immune system. But what exactly could this mean? Well, a few years ago, a team of scientists showed that excessive salt intake can negatively affect the functioning of such cells of the immune system as monocytes and macrophages, to the point that they are no longer able to perform their functions normally. Specifically, salt disturbs their metabolism and energy balance. And what's worse, 
salt is able to disrupt the functioning of even our mitochondria. With this information, the researchers set out to investigate whether salt abuse could also affect the ability of adaptive immune cells, such as regulatory T cells, to function. Understanding this potential effect of salt is important because T cells play a key role in the functioning of our immune system. They are sometimes called the immune police for a reason. This is because they suppress the self-reactive immune response and make sure it stays within reasonable limits and does not lead to damage in our own body. Dysfunction of T cells is associated with the occurrence of autoimmune diseases. Until now, scientists knew that salt can affect the functioning of monocytes and macrophages as well as the mitochondria in patients suffering from autoimmune diseases. It was also known that overuse of salt could cause the T cells themselves to behave as they do in the diseases mentioned above. The problem, however, was figuring out exactly how this was done. Previous studies have shown that even a short-term disruption of the functioning of mitochondria can have long-term consequences for the regulatory capacity of T cells. On the other hand, the element that in the case of salt disrupts their functioning turned out to be sodium. Specifically, it affects cellular metabolism by interfering with mitochondrial energy production. This seems to be the first step towards modifying the function of the T cells, which then begin to behave in the above mentioned abnormal way. Therefore, there are many indications that excessive salt consumption can significantly impair the functioning of cells crucial for our immunity. This potentially leads to the conclusion that salt may also play an important role in the context of many diseases. However, more detailed research will be required here. The interior of a small schoolroom with a few desks and a blackboard hanging on the wall in the material below, the situations are happening to several girls. But the most interesting is the one on the right side of the frame. Age approximately 25 years old, dressed in a black jacket, navy blue shirt and black trousers. Black. Patent high heels on bare feet. The position of the right foot out of the shoe dominates here, although again not completely. The right leg is usually lowered to the floor. 